Hey everyone, Chris from Be Automation here, and today I'm going to explain how locks on lighting should work in a smart home. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here at Be Automation, we create smart solutions that automate people's daily lives. And some of these examples range from energy management of renewables for better utilization and energy savings, automation processes on farms like lamb monitoring and feeding systems, and of course, home and office automation. Today, I'm gonna to show you how smart lighting in your home should be set up using Loxon. Loxon is a primary solution we use for a multitude of different automation tasks, but home automation is an area that it really excels in. But of course, a lot of this can transfer over to other applications like smart office spaces, care homes, and building management systems or BMS. If you'd like to learn more about Loxon, I'll put a link in the description to their website. And if you'd like to learn more about Loxon specifics like heating control, security systems, or a general overview of the system as a whole, I've made some other more in-depth videos covering these areas. Again, you can find the links to these videos in the description below, or they appear at the cards at the end of this video. So what hardware do we need from Loxon to have a complete automated lighting system in our home? So the first thing, as usual, is the mini server, and this one that I've got here is the wired in version, but you could also have the wireless mini server go and this acts as the hub of our smart home. Everything feeds back to this central controller, which communicates with all the different systems in the house, and in this case, the lighting systems. The next thing we need for controlling 230 volt lighting will either be relays or dimmer modules. So with relays, it's just gonna be an on or on off, and with the dimmer modules, we're able to dim from 0% all the way up to 100%. And with the relays, we've already got some available in the mini server, and if we need additional ones, we have extension modules, and that's the same with the dimmer extensions as well. And if we're retrofitting, we'll have the nano IO for the relays or the nano dimmer for the dimmer modules. But if we're using Loxon lighting and Loxon light fittings, these all communicate via tree or air, of which we need a tree extension or an air extension. The next piece of hardware will be the touch switch, and hopefully in most cases we shouldn't really have to use this, but this will be used for scrolling through different lighting scenes and switching them off. And then finally, to have a truly automated home, we'll want to use presence or motion sensors um, with brightness detectors built in. And what these will do is they act as the eyes of our system and be able to turn lights on and switch them off automatically. And with the brightness sensors, we'll also be able to detect how much light is already in that room and decide whether the lights need to be switched on or not. Auto lighting. No more nagging the other half or kids to remember to switch the lights off ever again. Probably the most used feature in a Loxon smart home is having the lighting switch on when you enter a room and then automatically switch off after a period of time where there's been no presence or motion detected. And this is all made possible using presence sensors, which have motion and audible sensors built into them, which act as the eyes and ears around our home. And something I really love about this is I can walk around my home with both of my hands full, carrying teas, coffees, cereal, and walk into a room and the lights will come on without me having to struggle for the light switch or even worse, having to put something down to get to the light. Lux level lighting. Lux is luminous flux, which is an amount of light cast onto a surface, which is easier just to think of as brightness level within a room or area. So what Lux level lighting is, is it's your home lighting system reacting automatically based on the amount of light in a particular area or room. So for example, we can set a brightness level threshold in every room or area 
and if the natural light doesn't meet this threshold, the artificial lights will automatically switch on when presence in that room is detected. And what Loxon are really good at is building multi-function within a single product. And the presence sensor is a really good example of this. So not only do you detect sound and motion, but you also get this brightness sensor built in for the Lux level reading. Great use of this Lux level lighting is daylight responsive lighting, which gets used a lot in smart offices. So similar to Lux level lighting, daylight responsive lighting ensures that if the natural light levels within that area aren't sufficient, then artificial lights can be used to top up that light. And this ensures that a constant brightness level of typically around 300 Lux is always maintained. Time-based lighting. So time-based lighting is having lighting moods in rooms that change based on the time of the day. And this has got to be one of my favorite functions with a Loxon smart home because it removes the need to actually use the locks on touch switches because it all happens automatically through the time of day and presence in that room. So this would be configured around how you use each room at a particular time throughout the day. So let's use my living room as an example. When I walk in between 5 a.m. and 9 a.m., my morning lighting mood automatically comes on, which is a medium level of brightness with cool white. And then between 5 p.m. and 9 p.m., my evening mood comes on, which is a high level brightness with warm white. And then after 9 p.m. till the morning, my late evening mood will come on, which is a much lower brightness, but still warm, and with one of the lamps coming on. Circadian rhythm lighting. Circadian rhythm is our body's internal 24 hour clock that runs in the background to carry out essential functions and processes. One of the most important and well-known circadian rhythms is the sleep-wake cycle, which is very closely tied to the light level and temperature outside. Because Loxon's lighting range supports RGBW lighting, which stands for red, green, blue, and white, this gives us millions of color combinations, which means you can use these color combinations inside to mimic the color and light levels outside as it changes throughout the day. And similar to our phones going into night shift where come the evening, the blue light is removed from the screen, our homes can do exactly the same thing, winding us down ready for bed. If you're interested in learning more about circadian lighting, there's a good blog post which I've linked in the description. Alarm clock lighting. So the best way to wake up is through light. And there's been various studies backing this up, talking about how it has a positive effect on the body, like supporting the morning cortisol peak and reducing our seasonal affective disorder. Something that I'm sure is prominent in us Brits. And seasonal affective disorder is, I'm sure, very prominent in us Brits due to the huge amount of light that we lose from our day once the winter arrives. But using Loxon as your home control system, we can do just this and wake you up with light every morning before your audible alarm goes off. And this is a much more natural and softer way to wake up and something I'd really recommend whether you're using Loxon or not. And an example of this might be having your alarm clock set for let's say 6 a.m. and then configured to slowly fade up the waking lighting mood three minutes before the audible alarm triggers. Doorbell lighting. So as the title suggests, this is lighting that flashes or turns a particular color when someone rings your doorbell. And this can be particularly helpful for people with hearing impairments, families with young children, and even for couples where one of the person works a night shift and the other person works from home. So let me explain. Having the ability to mute the audible part of your doorbell, but still have indication that the doorbell has been rung, allows for the kids or the partner working night shifts to not be disturbed by the audible part of the doorbell whilst they're in bed. And of course, in these rooms, you'd most likely have the visual indication disabled too. Alarm lighting. 
So in a fully integrated smart home, every subsystem should be connected and able to react if configured correctly. So in the event of the burger alarm going off, your home will not only trigger the audible alarm, but be able to trigger an additional visual alarm using the lighting, aiding to deter the intruder. And this same principle applies to the other alarm systems in your home. So for example, your smoke alarms, your fire alarms, the water leak detection alarms, and then of course any other alarms you have in your home. And this alarm lighting isn't limited to the internal lighting. You could also have your external garden lights configured to do a similar thing, indicating to neighbors that there might possibly be a problem at your property. In the event of your smoke or fire alarm triggering, we'd recommend perhaps an initial two or three flashes to alert the occupants that there is a fire, but then after that, all lights are brought on to full brightness throughout the house to enable a safer escape. Emergency lighting. So similar to alarm lighting, we can configure certain lights to do certain things in the event of an emergency, and not only in the event of water leak or fire, but also in the event of mains power failure. If there was mains power failure, we'd be using a UPS or uninterruptible power supply with battery storage, or if you already have battery storage like a Tesla Powerwall or Sonnen battery, we could use that to power the lighting. So let's take a possible scenario. There's a power cut at 10 o'clock and it plunges your home into darkness. What we can do is we can configure locks on to only bring on the lights in the most essential rooms like perhaps the kitchen or living room. And by limiting the amount of rooms the emergency lighting comes on in, it will reduce the drain of the battery in your backup system. Also, having a UPS or battery backup installed can also be used for systems like your security and CCTV, preventing them from ever losing power. Night mode. So what is night mode? Night mode is an operating mode which is enabled through a triple tap of a touch switch, usually in the master bedroom, when the last person goes to bed at night. And once night mode is triggered, it will automatically switch off any lights that are still left on throughout the house. And night mode can also be configured to do a multitude of other tasks at the same time, like enabling security systems or checking that windows and doors are closed. The kitchen window is open. Now with night mode enabled, let's say you or your kids get up in the middle of the night, the presence detectors will pick up your movement and then automatically bring the lights on. But because your home is set to night mode, the system knows to only bring them on very faintly and to not keep them on very long. And if you have RGBW lighting, you can have the system configured to only bring on red low level light, which will keep you from being woken up too much. And with night mode being enabled, there's no more stumbling around in the dark looking for a light switch. As soon as your feet hit the bedroom floor, providing there's a presence sensor, the night mode lighting will automatically come on. Programmable lighting circuits. So with the locks on RGBW spots, the grouping of your lighting circuits is no longer set in stone and can be easily reconfigured. So for example, your kitchen slash dining slash living room, let's say has 16 down lights in total and you're struggling on how you want to group them. Perhaps you're still rearranging furniture or know you'll at least want to change the arrangement later on. But with the locks on tree down lights, because they're digital and they have their own individual unique address, these can be grouped and ungrouped differently very easily whenever you like. And of course with locks on there are countless other applications for lighting. Um, a few examples might be security lighting, weather indication lighting, or perhaps sequence stair lighting. Anyway, that's it for now. Many thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video useful and if you're planning a locks on project and would like some assistance, please don't hesitate to get in touch. See you on the next video.